eve of the uh, COP24 in Poland, and that was the purpose of calling today's demonstration um, and protesting. We're outside of the Polish Embassy, which is over there. This is part of a series of protests that will be happening over the next couple of weeks um, in towns and cities across the world, uh, where people will be on the streets calling for the action that we need to tackle climate change. And COP24 in Poland in Katowice is supposed to be part of a key UN uh, set of talks after Paris, um, where we're supposed to ratchet up ambition, we're supposed to set the rule book so that people can see the transparency about meeting the emissions reductions that we need to to tackle climate change. But what we've got is a deafening silence from our own government, too busy swanning around saving their own skins, um, nothing to say on climate change, nothing to say on COP24. We've got the big fossil fuel companies lobbying away business as usual. We've got Trump and Bolsonaro with threats to pull out of Paris and climate denial has become a new trope of the populist part, far right and fascist right alongside their already existing um, nastiness of racism and, and, and misogyny. And Poland um, is set to host the talks um, is setting the tone for what they want the outcome of COP24 to be. Um, by appointing, wait for it, a coal company as a sponsor of COP24, introducing draconian anti-terrorist um, laws to stop demonstrations from taking place, um, with jail sentences for anybody who does demonstrate in any spontaneous demonstrations, and of course they're holding COP24 in Katowice in the heart of the pole industry and that's why we're here outside of the outside of the Polish outside of the Polish embassy in solidarity with the brave environmentalists who in a couple of weeks time in a, week, in a week's time will hold their own demonstration in Katowice um, outside of the COP24 uh, talks we don't expect that much different from the COP from the COP process what's different this time is the IPCC report 12 years to act to limit to 1.5 and the urgency of the situation and limiting it to 1.5, what a difference it would make in a terrifying, already terrifying situation. The millions of lives that would be saved. Um, the significant reduction in sea levels. Um, reduction in droughts and floods. Extreme weather. Um, less, less damage to the ecosystems and the biodiversity. And at least, in short, we would give ourselves a fighting chance. And I think it's important to say that we know that such action is possible. It is possible to take the action necessary to deliver on tackling climate change. And it's possible to take that action with climate justice for those who've done the least to cause the climate crisis but are suffering the impacts disproportionately. We know the money is there to fund a just deal for climate action. We know the technology is there to deliver a zero carbon society. And we know that tackling climate change is not something that can cut jobs but can actually increase jobs with a just transition that is possible. And we know that it's possible to take the action uh, to deliver on climate change. So we need to use today um, and we need to use the energy of the last few weeks to continue building a critical mass in society demanding the action necessary um, um, to, tackle, to tackle climate change. And build that social movement uh, with a range of tactics of successful social movements in, in the past. And take heart and hope from the growing climate movement that has been on the streets so visibly. Our friends in Extinction Rebellion here today, in the last few weeks, spreading globally. And of course, and most especially, the young people. Greta Thunberg in Sweden, 15 years old, who started those school student strikes and the Australian school student strikes yesterday that were magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. And Scott Morrison, when he told those young people what we want more um, is more le uh, learning and less activism, I got the reply very, very clearly from the young people on the streets. And one young person said this, Scott Morrison uh, and the politicians they say, when you try to have a voice in politics, Scott Morrison is shutting them down. Yet he continues to listen to the coal lobby and the people in big corporations who continue to profit from making climate change worse. Or, as one banner put it a little bit less eloquently, but just as succinctly, we'll be less activist if you were less shit. <laughs> so uh, today I want us to channel some of the sunshine 
from the school students out on the streets of Australia yesterday. A lot of the sunshine and channel, channel, channel all of the student power of the students out on the streets yesterday. Um, enjoy and uh, let's make sure that today is part of the more activism element of our building global climate, climate movement.